how to stand and watch. Number one, you must watch constantly. The lamp of God in the tabernacle was to burn always, that is, always in the night. And what is our life in this world from beginning to end but a dark night of temptation? Christian, it is so very important to make sure your sentry lamp does not go out in this darkness and your enemy catch you unawares. If you drift off into spiritual slumber, you're an easy mark for his wrath. You may be sure if you do let sleep overtake you, the devil will hear of it. He knew the apostles' sleeping time and desired to sift them like wheat. A thief is just getting up when honest men are going to bed. The devil, I am sure, begins to tempt when saints cease to watch. So be consistent in your watchfulness. Otherwise, you stand to lose everything. <clears throat> Some Christians, having been injured by a serious fall into sin, will be very careful for a while as to where they walk and the kind of company they keep. But as the soreness of their consciences wears off, they forget to keep watch and become as careless as ever. A shopkeeper who has just been robbed is very careful to lock up his store thoroughly. He may even stay up late to watch it for several nights. But as time passes, he relaxes his guard and at last gives it no further attention. Josephus, in his Antiquities, tells us that the sons of Noah lived only on the tops of high mountains for some years after the flood, not daring to build houses on lower ground for fear of being drowned by another deluge. But as time passed and no flood came, they ventured down into the plain of Shinar, where their former fear gave way to one of the boldest, most arrogant attempts against God that man ever pursued. They tried to build a tower high enough to reach heaven. The very men who at first were so fearful of drowning that they would not venture down the hill at last ventured on a plan to protect themselves against all future attempts from the God of heaven, to judge them. God's judgments often leave so strong an impression on a man's spirit that for a while he stays away from his sins. But when fair weather continues and he sees no storm clouds gathering, he descends to his old wicked practices and grows bolder than ever. If you want to be a true soldier for Christ, always remain watchful without slacking. Do not lie down by the wayside like a lazy traveler. Reserve your resting time until you reach home and are out of all danger. God did not rest until the last day's work in the creation was finished. Neither should you cease to wake or work until you can say your salvation is complete. Number two, you must watch universally. The honest watchman makes his rounds faithfully encompasses the whole town. He does not limit his care to only one or two houses. You also must watch over your entire being. A pore in your body is a door wide enough to let in a disease. Likewise, any one faculty of your soul or member of your body can let in an enemy that may endanger your spiritual welfare. It is sad that so few are watchful in every area. You may Set a watch at the door of your lips so that no impure communication comes out. But do you also keep watch at the door of your heart to see it is not defiled with lust? And perhaps you keep your hand out of your neighbor's purse, uh, but does your envious heart begrudge him the blessings God has given him? The Christian who is truly scrupulous in one duty may be falsely secure in others. If the apostle bids in everything give thanks, then it behooves us in everything to watch, so that God may not lose his praise. No action is so small but that in it we may do God or the devil some service. There is nothing in all God's creation that is so insignificant his providence does not watch over it, even to a sparrow or a hare. By the same token, no word or work of yours should be thought too inconsequential to be watched over. Jesus said we would be judged by every idle word that we speak. 
Number three, you must watch wisely. Tithing of mint, anise, and cumin must not be neglected, but do not let a preoccupation with the small things make you blind to your wickedness in the larger things. These ought you to have done, but not to leave the other undone, Jesus said. Begin at the right end of your work by giving careful attention to your primary Christian duties. Suppose a man about to leave on a trip asks his servant to look after his child and to put his house in order while he is away. When he returns, will he reward the hireling for tidying the house if he finds that the servant became so preoccupied with the task that he let the child fall into the fire and and seriously injure himself? Of course not. The child was the more important charge and should have been given top priority than the other duty attended to. But when you have attended to your primary duties, do not neglect the smaller ones. Lately there has been uh, much attention given to the small details of worship. But who is looking after the little child, that is, uh, the main duties of Christianity? Was there ever less love, compassion, self-denial, or power of holiness than today? Unfortunately, these cardinal duties, like the child, are in great danger of perishing in the fire of contention and division, which a perverse zeal for lesser things has kindled among us. Be especially careful to watch yourself in those areas where you know you are weak. The weakest part of the city needs the strongest guard. In our bodies, the most vulnerable parts are covered and kept the warmest. I would think it most unusual if the fabric of your grace was so consistently strong that you could find no weakness at any point. Take my advice in the matter and watch most carefully the area you find weakest. Is your head weak? Uh, Your judgment, I mean. See to it that you do not keep company with those who drink only the strong wine of seraphic notions and high-flown opinions. Is your weakness in your passions? Watch over them as one who dwells in a thatched roof house is careful of every spark that flies out his chimney for fear one should land on the thatch and set the whole house on fire. When our neighbor's house is ablaze, we throw water on our own roof or or cover it with a wet sheet. When flame breaks out at another's mouth, throw water on your own hot spirit to prevent a fire breaking out in you. You should always have available some cooling, wrath-quenching scriptures for just such a situation. These preventive measures will enable you to secure your house against any attack by the devil. And when the enemy has been put down, you will still be standing.